Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. There's interesting and important work being done by Vermonters who value the state's northern forest. It starts with a healthy and intact forested landscape, one that supports a sustainable local economy through stewardship with protection for wildlife. The area is the cold hollow mountains that stretch from the towns of Fletcher, Waterville and Belvedere in the south up to the Canadian border in the towns of Bakersfield, Enosburg, Montgomery and Richford. For more, we join Across the Fences, Rebecca Gollin. Bridget Butler is a wildlife detective. We have a turkey walking the side of the road, just walking down the side of the road. So there's a set of tracks in the gravel right here. The trained naturalist is looking for clues about how animals in the area move around. She takes particular note of where they're trying to cross roads, either successfully or not. We're, we're thinking of short distance migrants from um, turtles that need to move from the wetland to the woodland or the river to the woodland to larger mammals like moose and bear. And how do we make sure that they have those large blocks of forest that they need in order to successfully breed and survive in? Um, and then enough room to be able to disperse as well. Butler works for Cold Hollow to Canada. The nonprofit organization focuses on forest conservation. Their goal is to protect forest habitat by keeping it as unfragmented and connected as possible. The organization serves the seven towns that encompass the Gold Hollow Mountains, stretching from Fletcher and Waterville north to the town of Richford on the border. Large forest blocks that are intact um, are mostly what we find up here. And most of the forests um, in Vermont, in the entire state, are actually owned by private landowners. About 75% of forests are owned privately. And so that's where our focus is, is, is reaching out to private landowners and then also towns as well. So we're right near the Enosburg Town Forest right now. Um, and then that's surrounded by a number of different private landowners that are part of one of our programs called the Cold Hollow Woodlot Program. The Woodlot Program helps neighboring landowners come together to look at forest management. The organization also provides outreach to a number of community groups, nonprofits, and conservation commissions. The last component is their citizen science programming, in which trained volunteers collect data and document wildlife activity. We have a keeping track monitoring program, and we have trackers that go out into core forest habitats and um, take data on what they're finding there. That's mainly focused on larger mammals. And then we have the Wild Paths Project, which is looking at connectivity zones that are fragmented by roads. And how can we do a better job of protecting habitat on either side of roads where there are connectivity areas or crossing sites? And then how can we help advise towns in order to improve infrastructure to be able to support movement safely across the road that'll keep animals and people safe. Bringing people together is the key to success for the organization. It's all about relationships and building relationships with people. And so conservation doesn't really happen overnight. It takes a lot of time in order to move people to think about how they connect with the landscape and then how they can act. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the meander is really that that S shape that, yeah. that rivers are going to create slowing themselves. A recent time. workshop so in Enosburg like invited to participants to take a close up look at how their actions affect the landscape. Along with Cold Hollow to Canada, sponsors included the Missisquoi River Basin Association and Friends of Northern Lake Champlain. So the workshop that we're doing is called Making River Corridors Work For You. And the idea behind that is to work with local decision makers, planning commissions, conservation commissions, and other municipal officials and decision makers to try to get towns in Vermont in particular to adopt river corridor protections. There's going to be a sequence of riffle run pool, riffle run pool. And there are Chris Stepanuk is with the UVM Sea Grant program. She and her colleagues helped lead the workshop. They brought a tabletop model 
to demonstrate how streams react in different situations. It is a fantastic tool that feels like a, a big kid's sandbox, but what it allows us to do is to have people envision and see what happens when you do certain practices of management along a stream. So if you want to put in riprap or rocks to stabilize a bank or put in a culvert that is undersized, which we see in a lot of communities, uh, and then have a flood event, you can actually see what happens to the stream banks, to the stream bottom, to the erosion happening within a stream. While well, this workshop was focused on rivers and water issues, presenters hope that attendees leave with a sense of how connected their landscape is. If you live on a small stream, it goes somewhere else. Um, if you have a forested tract, the water in that forest is going to end up somewhere. And if the way you treat your land is going to impact the water and the way other people can enjoy their land downstream. Um, so Lindsay really White works with several local organizations on water quality and conservation. Poor water quality affects us not just for recreation, but also for how we use the water in our landscape and the food that is provided off of our landscape and the ways that we enjoy our landscape. Warm water fisheries don't support trout and so if we get worse water, it, 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 you know, more algal growth increases the temperature, makes it worse for fish. White's duties include outreach and education to schools, community groups and farmers. Collaborating on events like this with other local groups allows her to reach more people. We've got Cold Hollow to Canada working on forest concerns, which are obviously part and parcel to river concerns. And we try to work with them and encourage the landowners that are along the river to plant more trees, to increase those corridors, not just for the water quality concerns, but also for the wildlife habitat that that provides. As with all conservation efforts, it will take a while to see the results. We didn't end up with a phosphorus problem overnight, and we're not going to fix it overnight either, but we need to keep thinking about it Every day, every time we're on the river, every time we do something that involves water, we need to think about how to reduce the phosphorus that's entering our waterway. You can tell from the color that they mimic some of the natural colors you might see. So What's really valuable about working with all these partners is we can give people some action items, some things to do, some things to focus on that make you feel less helpless. Managing Vermont's landscape from forest to river and bringing together the partners who will shape what it looks like in the future. It's a new approach to conservation, and it's got people talking. In Enosburg, I'm Rebecca Gollin with Across the Fence. Thank you, Rebecca. I'm joined by two guests now. Bridget Butler is the project director of Cold Hollow to Canada, and Jesse Littlefield has served as a volunteer and an intern for the project. Thank you both for coming in. Now, Bridget, tell us a little bit about the history of Cold Hollow to Canada, how it got started, and who the partners are. Sure. Um, so Cold Hollow to Canada is a small conservation nonprofit. Um, it was started in 2008 by two people who were working in the forest field, uh, Nancy Patch, who's uh, the Franklin County Forester, and Charlie Hancock, who's a consulting forester. Forester. And they invited Fish and Wildlife in to do a little bit of community mapping with seven towns that they had identified in some core forest habitat. Mm -hmm. And out of that came our first um, set of conservation commissions. Many of these towns hadn't had conservation commissions before. Um, and our first Woodlots group, which is a group of landowners working together to manage their land in a certain way. Mm -hmm. And so how do you get individual landowners to work together to make management decisions yeah, it's, it's definitely a challenge. And what I love about the approach that Cold Hollow to Canada uses is they kind of do their homework first. We look at where landowners are located on the landscape, and we want them to be in these core forest blocks. And then we send them an invitation that says, Cold Hollow to Canada would like to provide you with some support, some resources, and hopefully some funding to be able to manage your um, land in a way that's outside of just your own little bubble and is kind of looking at the entire landscape. So we build a, a group together and then we have fun together. We invite people to potlucks, um, we meet four times a year, and then we bring in experts and resources to support those landowners with a plan to manage on a landscape scale. Mm -hmm. Now it's important because you want this land to all stay intact in one 
in one group. Right, so if we can keep forests intact, the, their health improves, um, we can keep biodiversity intact, and it's really good for wildlife as well. So most of our larger mammal species need large forest blocks, even songbirds as well. Um, so some of our partners kind of help us identify those spots. We work with uh, the Nature Conservancy, the Vermont Land Trust, and Audubon Vermont. All those people come to the table and help us figure out where are these core forest areas and where are the people that live in those coral core forest areas. Now in January of 2017, the project received a grant from the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Talk a little bit about the funding and how you plan to use that. Yeah, money. this is really exciting. So we applied for what's called a Regional Conservation Partnership Program grant um, in order to support these woodlot groups. And we had one um, as a pilot project that was very successful. Um, and the idea was to create two more, one in the town of Montgomery and one in the town of Richford. And this time to be able to bring the funding to help those landowners implement forest practices that we were recommending. So we got a grant for $640,000 in order to do that. And what's really wonderful is this is all action-oriented um, practices. So it's really on the ground work. Um, the challenge in that is that it, there's no administration or coordination. So we really do rely on um, donations from other folks to help us kind of be able to manage that. The even better thing is that that money leveraged um, some more money, and we're really excited to have just announced um, a new conservation um, fund um, that we'll be managing with the help of the Vermont Land Trust in the amount of $100,000 in order to support landowners in conserving their land. It can sometimes be a burden, right. so we're going to be providing up to $10,000 per landowner to defray some of the con uh, transaction costs involved in conserving your land. And so, Jesse, how did you choose to become a volunteer for Cold Hollow to Canada? Well, I just moved to Franklin County last year, and my greatest passions are forests and wildlife. And Cold Hollow to Canada really just embodies those two things. So it's a natural fit for me. It's, you know, the forest is my happy place, and I just, I want to see it intact. And part of that is, you know, the wildlife that roams through it. And, you know, if we lose even one species, because we take over all their land, then, you know, it can really throw off the whole biodiversity of a forest, which can really harm us. Now, you're also an intern. Tell me a little mm. bit about some of the work that you did as an intern. Yeah, so I'm finishing up an um, environmental science degree from CCV. So my academic advisor actually suggested Cold Hollow to Canada for me, um, and Bridget was kind enough to <laughs> take me on, um, which was really great for me because I was kind of allowed to do my own thing and really join their Wild Pass program. So I was out, you know, scouting the roads for signs of wildlife crossing, um, and it was really cool to see all the data compiled. So, um, you know, I kind of worked on finding patterns. It's still in the early stages, but you can kind of notice, you know, where we're seeing the crossings the most. Mm -hmm. And now, as you said, the project is called Coal Hollow to Canada, but the forest doesn't recognize borders. So, how do you work with people? over the border. Yeah, that's really interesting. You know, animals are going to go where they need to go. Mm -hmm. And one of the big challenges that we face is managing on a landscape scale for that. So Cold Hollow to Canada has a number of partnerships. We work with Two Countries, One Forest, which is a collective of different organizations that are working cross borders. So our, our counterparts in Canada, um, and then across um, the New England and Northeast region. Um, there's an initiative out of that group called the Staying Connected Initiative. Um, and so they're kind of pulling all of us together. And then on a smaller scale, um, we work right across the border. This is so cool. I can't wait to um, <laughs> tell you about this because they're wonderful. Appalachian Corridor and the Reuter Valley Land Trust. These are two um, organizations very similar to ours. And we're sharing best practices um, and kind of learning from each other. And then we're getting together and partnering on things. Tell me a little bit about the um, reference to a strong and stable local economy, because this is more than just about animals and so yeah, far. I think um, one of the things that can intimidate people when it comes to conservation is that you're going to come and tell me what to do on my land. Right. And what Cold Hollow to Canada does is we're really good at listening. And we look at what people value. I mean, the way we started was by listening to people's values, how they valued the land. And then we match that up with how do we keep forests healthy, resilient in the face of climate change? How are we going to keep them in a state that you're going to be able to do what you want to do? Do you want to pull um, firewood off your property? Do you want to make some money off of a timber sale? Do you like to recreate? So I think you know, our Vermont forest economy for us in Franklin County is kind of tied into sugaring. It's tied into wood products. It's tied into recreation. And we try to meet all those needs when we're working with our communities and our landowners.
All right, well, uh, I want to thank you both for joining me today. I can't wait to go thank out and you. explore that area. I've been through it a million times, and I never knew there was a cold hollow, so I've got to check that out. Well, we can't wait for you to see it. So for more information about the Cold Hollow to Canada project, including how to volunteer or get involved, check the website out that we've got on the screen. It's coldhollowtocanada.org. The site also includes upcoming activities and events, and it's a perfect time of year that, for that. Thanks again. Thank you. thank you. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. I'll see you again next time on Across the Fence. Thank you.